Hi. Um, so the fever is a 16 card tarot reading for Newfoundland and Labrador that explores the patterns of our history. I made it in response to Muskrat Falls and it asked the question, how did we get here? When it comes to Muskrat Falls, we are being told to believe in an outdated technology, that it is okay to redirect an ancient waterway and poison the environment and the people that live there. We are also told to believe that it is reasonable to displace a community of people that have lived on this, this land for many, many generations. We are told that the cost and time overruns and cheap electricity deals for other provinces is just the price of doing business and not a case of corruption. Then we are told we have to pay for it so the stockholders can meet the expected rate of return on investment with outrageous electrical rates that most of us will not be able to afford. When we, when we question this enforced belief system, we are scolded by a former political leader who can't take a challenge to his sense of privilege. We are expected to devalue our own intelligence and experience. We are told to shut up whining, everything will be fine. British journalist Christopher Booker describes this process of thinking as the fantasy cycle, a pattern that recurs in personal lives, politics, and history, when we willfully embark on a course of action contrary to the evidence before us. Things can go well for a time. This is what may be called the dream stage. But because this make-believe can never be reconciled with reality, it leads to the frustration stage. This prompts a more determined effort to keep the fantasy going. Then reality presses in, and that leads to the nightmare stage, as everything starts to crumble, culminating in an explosion into reality when the fantasy finally falls apart. This fantasy cycle is the have and have not narrative of our history. The first European settlers were put in poverty and debt by the merchants they worked for, but were told to believe that the trade exchange was fair. Joey Smallwood hinted that maybe fishermen should burn their boats and follow him into the glory of an industrial revolution, wherein he invested all the money in an economic philosophy that failed. We were told to believe that the draggers were not overfishing, that sonic booms from low-level flyings did not disrupt the lives of, of the people and animals living in Labrador. We were told to believe that all those cucumbers wouldn't rot in the greenhouse. <laughs> So, you know, it's pretty obvious that we have a history of being told to believe in things that aren't true. I made the tarot reading for Newfoundland and Labrador to symbolically disrupt this cycle. A tarot reading is a form of visual storytelling. There are 78 cards in a tarot deck, and each one symbolically represents different aspects of human psychology and experience. You shuffle, choose cards, arrange them in a specific way, then interpret their individual meanings and piece, their, piece together a story. The cards employ universal archetypes and blend together ancient symbols, historic events, religious metaphors, and prominent iconography from the world around us. Many artists have created original tarot cards. My cards splice together historical and contemporary images from Newfoundland and Labrador. I used my own photography, images I found in the media, on the internet, and the provincial archives. It is deeply satisfying to dismember the bodies of politicians. <laughs> <laughs> to turn the ceiling of the basilica into a dance floor for the Virgin Mary. To offer up a platter of pursed mouths of men in the throes of bloated speeches. Collage, by its very nature, is subversive. Stripping images of their initial context and pacing them into new compositions can be seen as a political act. In the 1900s, a group of artists began the Dada art movement. They were the first collage makers and used this powerful new art form to protest against the horrors of the First World War, the corruption of the government, and the conformity of the oppressive bourgeois culture. Surrealists used it to free the imagination from the repressive nature of the controlled mind. Feminist artists in the 60s and 70s reclaimed it as a political art form that spoke female truth to male power. The heart of the, of the art form's legacy is empowerment through creative rebellion. 
My show of collage brings up past and present together to show how cycles of political economic recklessness has had devastating social consequences. Joey Smallwood is a blind saint sitting on a pillar. He is a true believer that has been blinded by factories as dories in the distance burn. James Baird, an early St. John's merchant and disaster capitalist, is blinded by money. Captain Abram Keene's ruthlessness has been turned to ice. Silver butter knives pierce a knob of hardtack. Bread knives stab a resettled house. Lost men ride a Newfoundland dog on a floating ice pan. And ghosts of radical mummers get stranded along the Bonavista Highway. The six images projected here tell more of that story. At the top left is the emperor. He represents the establishment and he embodies power and aggression. He is collage from many of our politicians and premiers. His arms were artistically amputated from their bodies while they were gesticulating at podiums. The arms belong to Clyde Wells, Dwight Ball, John Crosby, Jerome Kennedy, Brian Tobin, Ed Martin, and Stan Marshall. The head is a blended composite of Joey Smallwood, Brian Peckford, and Danny Williams. The tiny gold crown comes fittingly from a scratch and win ticket. <laughs> and the pathway to the colonial building is a nod to the yellow brick road from the Wizard of Oz. Our emperor is a Shiva-esque carnival barker, destroying worlds as fast as he creates them. Beside him is the fool. In it, a woman offered a in it, a woman being offered a cucumber by an outstretched arm wears a flower in her hair, a blindfold of Monopoly money, and bright red lipstick. A pair of men's legs with wings on the heels run at breakneck speed, carrying her over the rooftop, rooftops and into the black of night. The cucumber, hopefully not too obvious a phallic symbol, is, <laughs> is in reference to the sprung greenhouse disaster and symbolizes the reckless, recklessness of government dicks. We... <laughs> <laughs> we, the, we, the woman, dressed in fake money, unsure and biting our lip, have been promised the world if we just keep chasing that cucumber. Next comes a probable consequence of the previous two cards, the Eight of Cups. Four women walk over an icy landscape toward the horizon. The flooded lake beneath them is frozen. They carry eight golden buckets full of clean water, the most precious commodity in the world. In the sky above them, four unconnected transmission towers carry no power to nowhere. In tarot, the Eight of Cups can mean abandonment or being forced to leave a hopeless situation. But below them lies an alternative. In the bottom middle of the row is the tarot card, the tower. A large structure being towed through the narrows, perhaps to be sunk at sea, is made up of buildings that hold symbolic power. At the top, the come by chance oil refinery, while, while the Confederation building runs down the middle, forming an inverted cross. On either side is the Basilica and the old Fortis building. On the bottom, Muskrat Falls and the Colonial building. The tower is flanked by images of two women who have upturned the status quo. While the high priestess dances on the ceiling of the Basilica, the woman in, ju in judgment offers up a platter holding the mouths of men who have upheld the assumptions of colonialism. The high priestess holds the sacred knowledge of truth. She urges us to trust our instincts. Judgment promises a day of reckoning if we speak our truth with fierce conviction. They are the pillars that support the expulsion of the tower, which in tarot means crisis, purging, radical change, and sometimes liberation. Thank you.